I'm back. I'm alive. Jake is like having an issue, I guess. Hi, how you doing? I have been resurrected. So we're gonna start with looking at the nails. Got some cheetah print, tan nudes going on. Thumbs are nude. Love, love, love. If you're ever wondering about length, I get medium ballerina. That's what I go with. So let's talk books first so that we can get started. So uh, last week's vlog got cut off where I talked about Orphan X. So I did finish Orphan X. I ended up giving it four stars. I really enjoyed this. It is very much a book that I think people who like Mission Impossible, John Wick, Liam Neeson movies, all of those, this is basically like the bookish version of that. So if you do not remember, or if you never knew what this was about, it is about a guy who was trained since he was a kid and this, it's kind of it reminds me a little bit of the red, is it the red room? The Black Widow situation from Marvel where he's uh, picked up, they pick up orphans, hence Orphan X, and there's like an orphan for each letter, and then goes into numbers, I guess, is what they said. And they are trained to be people who basically go in, get things done, and then leave, but something goes awry, and he kind of goes underground for a while, and he starts doing these like almost charity cases where if someone has a problem, they call this number of the nowhere man. Ow. And then he comes and basically takes care of it. And then the only payment is that the next time that person finds someone who needs help, they give them his number so that he can help them. And then it just trickles down the line. But, you know, obviously something goes wrong with the case that we see the first time in this book. So that was uh, that book. I really enjoyed it. I'm excited to keep going on with the series. I'm going to pause for now because I picked up a cozy mystery and I'm just having a great time. So this one was another one recommended from Peter from Peter Likes Books, Peter Vlogs, Peter Mon, Peter Does Stuff, Peterisms, Peter Reviews Things. There you go. I got all the channels. All the channels. I will link down below the ones that I watch, which is the majority of them. He is another booktuber and he was the one that recommended the Misfortune series and I fell in love with that. And so now I'm reading this one which is like something in Scrabble is the series name but the first one is The Murder at Pirate's Cove. And this is a gay cozy mystery. So I was like, oh my god, already here for it, obviously. And here we have a guy who inherited his great, 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 or maybe just three great, aunt's estate, and uh, she had a bookstore that he's now fixing up, and so this is not a spoiler, by the way, this is literally like the plot, but he is arguing with this guy who wants to buy the bookstore, despite the fact that the dude is like, I don't want to sell it, I want to fix it up and run it as my great, 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 great aunt would have wanted. Uh, homie ends up dead <laughs> in the bookstore, and then the owner is like, well, G will occurs. And so far we have a, the police chief is investigating and we don't know if he is gay or not. And so it's kind of like, how we feeling? How we feeling tonight? <laughs> yeah, that's all I have so far. I'm only a little bit into it on my Kindle, but I'm already loving it. And there are five out, I believe right now. And the sixth one comes out next month. And then the seventh and eighth come out next year. One early next year and one a little later. So it's exciting. I'm excited to have another book that I'm pumped to go read. And so what I'm probably going to do is after I do this next thing that I want to talk about, I'm going to go plop down and read this book because I'm loving it so far. And then tonight we're going to watch Only Murders in the Building. We're, we have two more episodes until we're caught up until tomorrow's episode. So... I'm loving it. We're both really liking the show. It's really fun. If you like true crime podcasts or if you like to make fun of true crime podcasts because it is like a dicey sitch when it comes to like discussing those things in a entertainment format. Uh, this show definitely like pokes fun at that and kind of recognizes that which I like. And then also the actors are just great and it's a little campy. Like I'm just, it's good. It's good. I'm having a good time. So there's that. But now I also got 
my passion planner in the mail and this is a planner that I decided I had to try because I need something that is super plain which this is the monthly as you can see very plain very easy to customize hello come back to life please and then the weekly is this hourly one and I have just been obsessing over a couple of people that I follow on Instagram who have this planner and it's I really do well with time blocking so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go set it up I ordered some stickers from Etsy for this as well for a more minimalistic situation compared to the monstrosity of stickers that is my memory keeping planner but they are not here yet so I'll work with what I've got thus far but uh yeah that's all I've got for you for right now um I guess I will continue reading that book and then I will check in with you at a later time bye bye can I tell you what's been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, want to see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Hello, everybody. So I know the lighting is a little not great right now. We're doing like a little ambient unboxing thing. Let me see if I can angle this for more actual lights yeah we'll just do that that's okay because then you can see some pretty shelves and then you can see me i just got home it is 7 50 p.m just got home from work there was like a cookout volleyball game thing that teachers had to attend so i attended uh but i wanted to update you on this book that i started yesterday morning and i've been flying through it so fast that i have completely forgotten to update because i didn't realize i was like gonna finish it i'm about halfway through right now but it is the woods are always watching or whatever the new stephanie parkins book is <sighs> i'm really liking this it is a ya thriller it is about these two best friends who go out into the woods. It's Josie and Nina. And I want to say it is Nina who is about to, they're both about to graduate, but Josie's going to stay home and attend a local college while Nina is about to fly off to California. And so there's this tension between the two girls because one is leaving and the other one feels like guilty that they're leaving. And the one who's staying is feeling guilty that they're upset. It's like there's a lot going on and so they're kind of dealing with that and so far not a lot has happened. Halfway through not a whole lot has happened but we've gotten a lot of creepy in the woods moments because these two girls have gone on a camping trip together and basically I don't think they're in the Appalachian Trail but they're in the Appalachian area and that place just from the stories I've heard scares me. This book is giving me very wrong turn. <laughs> which I'm obsessed with. If you don't know what that is, look up the movie because that's the vibe I'm getting and I'm gonna be so excited if I'm right about that. But uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna finish that tomorrow. Honestly, on the way to work, I love YA books because they are not as info dumpy. And let me be like, adult books aren't inherently info dumpy, but there's a lot more to take in when it comes to adult fantasy and that's the type of adult I'm used to reading as of like the last two years so branching more into YA again going back to my roots also reading so that I can put more in my classroom but mainly because I just love YA unabashedly I just do and I really love adult thrillers and romance now and those two I, I, I won't listen to romance on audio I surely won't thrillers fantastic on audio anything YA fantastic on audio adult fantasy not it have to follow along can't do it but let's unbox these two things really quick i think i know what this is i think it's from penguin teen which is exciting it's my excited dance is it is it is it oh. good night it is oh you guys you guys you guys you guys you guys you guys, you guys. oh do you hear the thunder yeah it is storming outside well it's doing a lot of lightning like pre-storm lightning and thunder as like a little i'm here and honestly kind of love it but 
It's The Righteous. It's The Righteous, which is the newest Renee Audier book, and this is not gonna show up, like, sorry. But it's the new Renee Audier book in the beautiful world, and I am so excited. My teacher friend and I were watching Vampire Diaries. Well, I got distracted because attention deficit, but I was watching some <laughs> Vampire Diaries in her classroom before I got distracted, and it made me want to watch the originals because that is the superior show of that franchise, and now I want to read these books. I want to read these books. Should I do a reading vlog reading all three of the books? What do we think? Also, I got the Bonfire Order, and this is the ugh, Camp uh, Weekend Ween. Keep wanting to say winter ween, and then I'm like, no, it's not winter ween, it's like goose, and then I go to say summer ween, and I'm like, it's not that either. But I got my merch, and I'm very excited about it. So, Camp Weekend Ween is a weekend readathon Gabby and I are doing in October. So, if you'd like to join, I will link the announcement. It's gonna be fun. I'm very excited. It's just like a little weekend thing based off of our summer ween readathon that we've been doing for, oh my god like two years now wow but we have merch for the first time and i got a shirt i think this is the blue that's what i meant to get let's see if i got that but this is a little logo and it's so this is so soft and then i got of course i got a crew neck y'all know i would have i gotta have something to live out of so this is the crew neck that i got and i'm gonna be real um girls got hips okay so sometimes i never know <laughs> sometimes i never know but that's actually kind of true sometimes i like never know anything but i don't know what sizes to get so in the t-shirt because i don't mind if it's oversized i did get the xl because i kind of like the idea of living out my princess diane uh <laughs> fantasy and wearing this with biker shorts and like these little shoes that i have so that's probably what I'm going to do for the whole weekend. But this is the XL, if you're wondering. It is um, it is bigger than I anticipated, but in a good way. Like, it's longer than I thought. But I think it's a pretty good width-wise just to be comfy. Because they are from a comfiness. And in this, I got an XL as well. But that's because I like my crew necks in oversized. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I just never know... Uh, when it comes to sizing that isn't specifically men's or women's, it's hard for me to gauge what it's going to look like, even if I measure. So, yeah, I went ahead and got those sizes just to uh, be careful about it. If you do want to get the merch, I'll link that too. The first run that we had was really just because if you ordered it at a certain time, it was guaranteed to ship before the readathon started. Obviously, this is like way before the readathon starts because it starts the weekend of actual Halloween. If you want it, you can still get it. And I think it tells you on the website when it will ship. So that's still an option. You can still grab some. It wasn't like for this time only kind of deal. Um, the way bonfire works is like you hit a certain number or you hit a certain date, I guess, and then you do the first batch and the second batch will happen eventually. It's just, you have to place more orders, I guess. I, you can still buy it. That's all I know. That's all I know for sure is you can still buy it and it will get to you. I just think it'll get to you closer to the readathon and you know, the closer you get, the more likely it could come after the readathon. We didn't want that. But I've seen a couple people when I had like a break to freaking breathe today at work, saw a couple people I saw Ami, she had her merch, and I saw Frankie DME had merch. I was like, I was so excited. Also, I just want to say, I've talked about this before, but I've definitely gotten more subbies, so I'm so talking about this. So, um, just to put it out there, I do read my Instagram DMs. A lot of the time, I read them on my lunch break at work, so I will reply to people if I can, but honestly, sometimes, um... I, it makes me really anxious because there's like just if there's more than a certain number of messages in that part that says like nine whatever like unread like or it's like if, because you don't follow them it's like in the request box I don't really know how it works but the folder that isn't primary or general it's like people sent you a message but you haven't looked at it yet that folder whatever that is um when it gets to a certain number I get really overwhelmed and um I get really overwhelmed easily especially online mainly because 
and I know that I do this with comments too. Like, I want to reply to everyone and I want to say something substantial to everyone who says, like, a paragraph. I want to give a paragraph. If you put an emoji, I want to match it with an emoji. If you even say, like, something that, you know, a bunch of people are saying, like, oh, I like this, I like this, I like this. I still want to say, like, thank you so much to every single person, you know? So I put this pressure on myself to have, like, the perfect response. But then with Instagram, I just feel like I don't want to be a letdown <laughs> if I reply. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. I read them and I see them, but sometimes I get anxious. Olivia, 2020. Sometimes I do get anxious. <laughs> oh, it's not 2020. I'm doing fine. Okay, so aside from all that, uh, updated about reading and I am still reading that cozy mystery. Ew, it turned ugly. Hello? Oh, the pink in my skin brought it back love that story in the cozy mystery making my way through dune as well i'm gonna tell y'all right now you probably already knew you probably <laughs> probably giggled when i pulled dune up in that last vlog and went like girl love to see you read it um oh speaking of i did decide to dnf the name of the wind and i think it's self-care but Dune, anyways, I am enjoying it and I hope to continue to enjoy it. I did see that someone said that the author actually spoke out against Star Wars saying that they took too much from Dune. But to be honest, like, can you be better if they did it better? But nevertheless, I'm gonna go take a shower now and then we can unbox this fairy loot tomorrow. Does that sound okay? We'll do it tomorrow because the October break starts tomorrow. So I have a half day at work, which is awesome. And then I'm going to come home. I'm going to film my October TBR for Sunday. Maybe do some editing. Probably not. I'll probably take a nap. And, um, yeah, that's, that's what I got there. So I will check in with you guys. I hope it storms so good tonight. Oh my god. I could just hear the thunder. It's just a rumbling, y'all. Just a rumbling. Oh my god, it feels so weird when my ears do this. I put my mama Mir Mia earrings in the wrong way. But honestly, I look good in gold, so who cares? <laughs> you know. There might be a bit of paper left under the pool of coffee. Try to remember what I wrote and you just laugh. Better have a talk, think it might last until it's dark. When the candlelight starts out, I really think it's goodbye. I didn't love you anyhow. Now I'll make each day count. I didn't love you anyhow. Okay, this is a new angle. Kind of into it. Um, hi, weekly vlog. I have not forgotten about you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I do have two fairy loot things to show you and two books update you that I freaking finished. So let's talk about the books first, obviously. So I finished Murder at Pirate's Cove and I gave it, what did I, I don't give star ratings really anymore. Um, only because on Storygraph, it doesn't really prompt you to leave one. You have to like go out of your way to do it. So I just haven't been doing it recently. And I kind of like not having to think about that. Whenever I would talk about books, it felt like I really had to say my star rating. Like that was a huge part of it, but it doesn't feel like a huge part of it anymore. And I realized like it doesn't do anything for me to rate it. So I don't know why I pressure myself to rate it so much. Everyone's rating system is so weird. So I don't have a rating. Let's just leave that there. But I did really enjoy this and I'm going to continue on with this series. This is going to be a new cozy mystery that I am in love with. I already know. So I think I talked about it before that this is about a guy who moves to a small town. He inherits his great great aunt's estate, bookshop, all of that. The guy who wants to buy it from him ends up dead in his property and so he's the suspect. I loved this because it had every element of cozies that I love. Ow. The hiccups, man. So it had... There's a dog. He finds a dog and it's really cute. I love the animals involved. There's a lot of food. It's really just like atmospheric in that way. I love the seaside feeling and atmosphere that's created with like describing all of the like sea salt in the air and whatnot. I just, I don't know. I love that. I can literally picture it in my mind and it almost is to the point it's so descriptive to where I feel like I can smell it like I just love that and there's like this little romance that's blossoming kind of but it's really slow and hesitant so it's gonna take a while which I love that 
all the books and cozies I've read are about 250 to 270 pages. They almost never hit 300 or above. And so it's like a really slow burn series. I just love it. So I'm excited. Loved it. Good times. Next one I finished was The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Parkins. I, wow. Second day of October and I've already finished two books on my October TBR. Okay, so this one, I liked it. The very end scene was hilarious. I have to say, I did not realize like what this story was going to be about. And I still have not looked at the synopsis because I mean, at this point I've read it, it doesn't really matter if I'll look at the synopsis or not. I will before my wrap up, but right now I don't think it would make a huge difference. I would just describe this as like, if you're freaked out by the woods and you like to be scared when you read books, this is perfect. Um, this is also the book I will reference when anyone, including my partner, asks me to go camping at any time ever in our lives. Um, it's a swift <laughs> no. It also was correct when I said it was giving wrong turn because it gave wrong turn and I loved it. It was so creepy, atmospheric. It was a good, fun YA slasher is what I would pitch it as. Not a thriller, definitely more of a slasher. Pretty gory. It has some good description in there to the point where I was like, it's kind of... Why I say it's a slasher is because the description of like things happening to them borders on horror because it's like body... Hello, Jake. It's like body descriptions of like breaking a leg by falling or an arm being like a whole situation happening with, the, with an arm and a hand. Uh, mm. Literally just all the fears I could possibly have wrapped up into one. But I really enjoyed it because it felt like a slasher movie slash horror combination thing. I don't know, but I was surprised because I was reading and I'm like, this is the lady that wrote Anna in the French Kiss? Okay. <laughs> She's got variety. She has got range. So those are the two that I've read so far. And then today, I'm currently on the first sprint of the Lou Fantasma reading sprints for Patreon for the book club with Mel. And I... I'm getting some editing done for tomorrow's video, getting some vlog clips filmed for the vlogs I've currently got going on, and then organizing everything. Let's do some unboxings, because I got some books and I'm excited about them. So first up, I did get the, is it the Bookish Box edition of From Blood and Ash series, but I didn't love it as much as I love the Fairy Loot, so I actually sold those and they are already to their new lovely home. And uh, now I have the fairy loot ones, which are, I think, just very beautiful. And I'll show you these first, and then I want to show you underneath the cover because, oh my god. So, they have nice covers. I like the spines the best. Let me see if it will... There you go. These spines, I just, I don't know. They kind of look like classics spines and let me tell you this book <laughs> it's not like that but it's still good I enjoyed it this is the one that I still need to read I kind of got into it a little bit and then I was just like maybe not now because I want to enjoy it you know so those are the covers and the spines and then they have stenciled edges for each but underneath the books is what I was like I might end up putting these covers somewhere. I don't even know. I'm going to pull a Chandler Ainsley and like have some naked hardbacks on my shelves because here's our boy, Kieran. I'm pretty sure that's him. And then, am I getting my fantasy series mixed up? Mm, I don't know. It is very much like every other fantasy series, but I still enjoy it. Oh, wow. That fan art is a moment. Okay. So they each have a different character on the, what's it called? So here we have Castile and then that spine. And it's just so pretty. I don't really know where to put these covers, but I have to say, like, I do love the spines all together. I think they look good, but underneath is just like ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. 
Then we have Poppy, and that's fine. But I, I don't know. I don't really know how I want to display them yet. Probably what's going to happen is I'm going to end up just keeping the covers on because I don't want to accidentally lose them and or ruin them for whatever reason. But I just think that these spines like actually look really nice together. Like it makes it look like a high epic fantasy thing. And let me tell you, it's not that. So next up, okay, where's my sword? Sword. Okay. So I think I've already seen this book on the gram, but I don't remember anything else really about this box and also I don't even think I really know if I'm being honest anything about the book oh but they're socks I just love socks so much I think socks am I an adult now because socks might be my favorite thing to get <laughs> especially in book boxes because they're always cute and themed to a book obviously because it's a, it's a freaking book box but uh yeah I just love getting socks in these I just think that they're cute and also, because they're very distinctive, there is no arguing between my partner and I of whose socks those are because they're fairy loop. And that's me. That's just me. So this is a little... That's not little at all. Oh, it's a daughter of Spooky Bone. Let's see. Can you see this? Whoa. It's a daughter of Spooky Bone tapestry. And I love this. I... Don't know where I want to put it though, because I have. Let me see. Look in. See, I have this Beauty and the Beast one, and I have a um, oh Lord. Well, that's a Cruel Prince one, and that is a Why Am I So Stressed City of Brass one. <laughs> and so I wanted to hang this one up too because I love this series as well. Uh, I just don't know where. And obviously, I'm I'm not gonna stress to find the place until we move because what the heck. But Here's another little tray, and these are cute. It wasn't the end, it was a better beginning. So I think this is from Cemetery Boys, if I'm not mistaken. I recognize the author's name, but I have not yet read that one. Then we have the Prison Healer card holder. Oh, the last one of these I gave to my partner. And it's kind of looking rough, so good timing to give them another one but it's just this little card holder and then it has an opening for I don't know more cards sure sure and then we have probably the pin this is an ember in the ashes pin I feel like every time I forget that I'm trying to finish this series something comes in a book box that reminds me that I am um, Trying to finish this series and it's like kiss. I heard you the first time, thank you. Next up, oh this is a very pretty copy. I've seen a lot about this book. Is this the, I think this might be the one that already, oh my god. It's also pitched as something related to Ember in the Ashes. Okay, I get it, universe heard. Um, I think this is the one that just got a Netflix adaption. I'm not 100% sure on that. But Beasts of Prey, this is not the book. This is an extra book. I don't know if this is an arc or anything, but it says on the back, not for resale. So I don't know if that means it's an arc. I don't really know. I'm just here for a good time. And then we have these two spooky strange men who I'd love to know what you are involved in because that looks like a series I would like to read. Let's see. It might be in this little bag of wonders. Ooh, it's starting to get a bit dark outside. Love the storms. Oh, okay. I have heard of this book. I know nothing of it, though. But I did love A Curse So Dark and Lonely, so hopefully I'll like this one. But here, I don't care about those. Oh, next, so the theme for October is Broken Hearts. So I think that we're going to get a special edition of Stephanie Garber's new book, Once Upon a Broken Heart. And if you, let me show you the fairy loot finale. And yes, my Stephanie Garber books are always out of order. And no, I don't care. Um, because I just, honestly, they ruin my life. They run my life. So they get to do what they want. But look at this edition of finale like this is one of the first ones i think that they had stenciled and sprayed edges and this rose gold like oh god 
This is seriously the prettiest book <laughs> ever. All of my UK editions of the Carvel series are so gorgeous. But um, I don't know where the little card is that tells me what everything is. But, oh, apparently this book is like Zorro and Robin Hood. Okay, go off, queen. Um, also, if anyone has any recommendations of what size, uh, what is that called? The, those little book sleeve protector things that I've been talking about recently. I don't know what size to get for this size of book. I don't even know what size book this is. It's so small. I know it's a UK one. But anyways, this is Defy the Night. So we've got some lilac edges. It's probably one of my favorite color edges. And then we have just this little fleur de lis. And then it has the little sign. This is a little baby book. It's near 400 pages, but it does not feel like it. It's so tiny. Uh, but I have all three of her other books right behind me in the Fairy Loot editions. So I like that this will match in height at least. And then this is the artwork for this book. I do not know if this is a series. Let's see who blurbed. Elizabeth Lim, Mary E. Pearson, Adrian Young, Jennifer L. Armanchuk, Sandra Clare, Stephanie Garber, Isabella Banez. Okay, well. That's all a really good <laughs> lump of people, I'm going to tell you right now. And I am in the mood for some YA fantasy, so maybe this will be coming soon. I'm not sure, no promises. Like, let's just be real, my reading is kind of all over the place. And it's October, so I kind of want to focus on more spooky books. But, aside from that, uh, I am going to go and... Get back on sprints, try to get all of these clips organized so that my uh, video for tomorrow I can send it to the sponsor to get it checked out. And then I will be, what am I going to do? Oh, I got to film a planning video for Patreon and then we'll be reading. Maybe I'll listen to an audiobook while I do that so that I can multitask. But yeah, either way, either way, I'll check in with you later. Also. Sidebar. I know the audio is not as good on this camera, but the lighting is so much better that I've really been debating just using my other camera for all my Instagram pictures, which I already do, and then what well, I try to do. Sometimes I get lazy and I use my phone. Don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> I say to 30,000 people. Secrets, right? We got them. But I really like the lighting on this. Like, it's so much better than the other camera. That doesn't matter. Literally, it doesn't matter to anyone. Uh, but I'm gonna go now, so. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore Hello, Mona I reach through mysterious ceilings My only hope I look for the things I don't know Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know <laughs> Hi there, so... <laughs> Uh, this is a heating pad. Don't mind that. But I um, somehow pulled some muscle, don't even know, stretching this morning and I literally cannot move this arm a lot. So uh, <laughs> this vlog is not getting edited till tomorrow. Wasn't the plan, not great. But uh, 
I'm just gonna give in to it and try not to like guilt myself <laughs> for not editing. Uh, but I did start two new books. So the first one is April May Fall. I just got this in the mail. Randomly, was it Source Fire Books? I think, or no, Entangled. Entangled sent me this um, unsolicited, but thank you. This one is about uh, a mom of three who just got divorced. So she's single, the dad sucks, and she is a social media influencer. And I think the love interest is actually her manager. And I just, I love books about moms and I love books about social media influencers. There's just something about them. I like, honestly, more than anything, I like mom drama books. And then I like social media influencer books and like thrillers and mysteries because it's scary and there's a lot you can do with that. But this one is good. It's like a good relaxing break from intense books. It wasn't on my TBR. I'm on chapter five and I'm just reading it for funsies, I suppose. And then the, I think that's all. The other one is for a thriller vlog. So actually scratch that. But... I think I'm gonna go take my cord with me and make an iced coffee and set up the situation in my library and just do some reading, I guess, for the day. I don't really know, but why not? Right, sure, okay, sure. I don't know. This is not like a lot of pain. <laughs> like I can't even like fully turn my head. I'm like, hello, hello. Don't look at my side profile. I saw you try, okay, well. Anyways, what I'm going to try to do is not think about the fact that I have a dentist appointment tomorrow because I have a lot of dentist anxiety. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's, let's just go read and I don't know, let's at least make coffee. At least that. As a young girl, it feels we're mine. We played high. Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a care in the world I was one rich little girl Daydreamer, kidnap me Take me back, all the way back Okay, God bless America. <laughs> the motto today is feeling rough, looking rougher. Um, I just joined some reading sprints that Princess is ho hosting. Words. I will link her down below. But I got my spooky coffee. Got my not very spooky book. But I may also read um, Payback's a Witch. That's the other one I've started, Payback's a Witch. So far what I got is this town is full of witches. Well, some people are normies. But uh, the main character is a witch, and she's returning to this town after nine years for some competition that's hosted every 50 years. And that sounds great. I love that there's like an actual plot with the romance, so I'm very excited. So I may end up reading some of that on my Kindle or reading my mom drama book that I already told you about. But Ginger and I will figure that out as we go, as we do most things, so... I 
Another way to say this, but I think, I think. 